uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you here for one more Eurostruct talk. Uh, today we have with us our esteemed colleague Nicolas Bardou and also the with me doing the moderation uh, Professor Juan Casas which is also the vice president of Eurostruct and um, I would like to give you some uh, brief information uh, about how the things will be managed. The first thing that we would like to ask you is to turn off the cameras because of uh, not to charge too much the Wi-Fi connection. And uh, the second thing is with respect to the how we are going to proceed with uh, the questions. For those that do not know, uh, the questions should be made either on Facebook or on the Zoom chat. So what happens is that if you have any question to make, you can place it on the Facebook or in the chat in the Zoom, you can place the question directly to the Eurostruct association account, which means that you need to select the Eurostruct association account when in the chat and put their copy paste or put there your questions. Uh, a part of that, I would like to acknowledge also our associate uh, partners. I would like to acknowledge uh, University of Mingo and Isis for providing the Zoom platform. And I also would like to acknowledge uh, YAPSE and uh, FIB for uh, supporting us on the dissemination and networking level. And also to Boutique for providing us with all the design and all the issues concerning the, uh, the talk. So I will now ask uh, Joanne to present our esteemed colleague, our invited colleague, and uh, uh, wish you a very nice and pleasant, fruitful time now with uh, the Eurostruct talk. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. So good morning, good afternoon, and good night. It depends on the part of the world where you are. Uh, it is my big pleasure to introduce to you uh, today for this talk, uh, Nicolas Bardou. Nicolas Bardou is a technical director and the planning department and uh, for Vinci Auto Routes in France. And uh, this is the, the four uh, Euro Struck talk. And for the first time uh, today, we'll have someone that is from the owner part. So uh, after some academics and managers, today we'll have the perspective of the owner because Nicolas has a long experience on this. Uh, he has been first working on the construction and after that, with all the knowledge of this and the background of the construction world, he changed, he moved to more the, the management and the, and the bridge program from the owner perspective. He has been working for that in the last uh, eight years, so he has a very nice experience on that. And uh, also today, uh, he is uh, working with the asset management as st strategy in the Vinci Auto Roots context. Of course, he's a member of uh, many associations. Most important, probably, he's a member of PR in the, in the bridge uh, committee, and also he's a member of other uh, important organizations in, in France. And very important for us, he was a very uh, active member of the industrial advisory board of our cost action T1406, uh, where he uh, shared with us uh, his long experience from the point of view, from the side of the, of the owners and of the manager of, uh, of bridges. So with all this background, I expect a very good uh, uh, talk. I, this will be for sure on this subject of the ultra high performance concrete for the repair, the strengthening of structures. So, Nicolas, when you are ready, you can start. Thank you very much, uh, Jose. Thank you very much, uh, Juan, for this uh, very impressive uh, introduction. Uh, yes, I am as honor. I will share with you uh, some uh, recent experiences that uh, that uh, we have in uh, Vinci Autoroute uh, regarding uh, what kind of uh, innovation system we implement in order to save some uh, some really uh, uh, 
serious uh, problem we have in um, one kind of uh, bridges that we have to, to deal with, which is the soil steel structure. So, uh, before uh, maybe to enter uh, in this, uh, this uh, subject, I will so give you uh, so a little introduction regarding France and regarding Vinci. France has more than 1 million kilometers of roads, including 2,000, uh, 20,000 kilometers of highways. Half of these highways is granted to private operators. We have financed, designed, built, operated, and maintained the highways network. The first concession contract dates back to the development of the first interurban highways in France, late uh, 50s, early 60s. Vinci Autoroute is the leading European motorway concessionaire, operating half of the French concession network, more than uh, 4,400 kilometers of motorways. As such, Vinci Autoroute managed over the 6,000 motorways bridges, including nearly uh, 250 viaducts. Vinci Autoroute operates through three main companies, uh, as you can see in this map. Uh, the biggest one is ISF in the south. Uh, in the Riviera, there is Escota and uh, Cofiru Network uh, near Paris. So, uh, regarding this first context that I explained, and to cope uh, with the urgent need of uh, new infrastructures in France, many innovative techniques have been implemented on the French national uh, road network, with, in the background, the search for economic optimization and speed of design and construction. And uh, it this is how steel culver was born. But what is a steel culver? Uh, this is a bird steel culver. It is a composite structure consisting of a flexible metal structure made of uh, corrugated steel uh, in a, uh, assembled by bolting, which is embedded in a compacted embankment. It can be used as an hydraulic structure in drainage system to restore waterways and so on, or as a dry structures to restore roads uh, or agricultural uh, traffic on the fauna uh, path. Bird culvers are recognized as a bridge for diameters exceeding two meters, uh, according French standard. And some of them have an opening greater than six meters. So uh, their use was uh, really widespread because this type of structures was simple, quick, and inexpensive to build while offering longitudinal flexibility to tolerate profile misalignment and having a good ability to carry large load, which is really important. And the structures have flourished in France from the 70s to the middle of the 80s. But this heritage is confronting serious problems. Steel culvers were generally located in unfavorable environments with the presence of water or aggressive soils, with the transport of solid elements, which cause degradations of the culvert at the level of its walls in the tidal area and of its raft. Corrosion can also be very important on the backfield side and therefore not detectable during the visual inspection. The infiltration of water loaded with the uh, uh, desicing salt, for example, through the embankment from the platform is also a factor of accelerating corrosion. Overall, the national heritage of metal culvert is aging. Many of them is approaching 35 to 40 years. 
which is their actual lifetime from a survey of manager of the national uh, of the, the national road networks. For example, some manufacturer catalogs uh, expect 25 years as a uh, lifetime for this kind of bridges. The steel covers are part of sensitive bridge families identified as having a risk of sudden failure given their design and their size. So at the French level national, we estimate about 3,000 uh, buried steel culverts, and uh, one third of them are in the Vinci Autoroute network. So I know I, I, I will give you some, uh, uh, some information regarding the way um, uh, with uh, uh, the, the, the way that uh, Coffee Wood deal with this, uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, problem. Um, so uh, we, we have uh, by now a focus uh, in one of the three Vinciotto network. Uh, and this is near Paris uh, with a lot of uh, desicing salt. Uh, so uh, we, we decided at the late of the 18th, the, the 19th, sorry, uh, following uh, alarming diagnose that uh, the whole program was to complete the total replacement of all structures. And in this network, we have about 120 20, uh, culverts. So we did a multi-criteria analysis uh, to assess the disorder and prioritize the action, prioritize the action, sorry. And to date, more than 50 culverts have been replaced. To give you an idea, the cost of replacement is from 200,000 euros for a little uh, diameter uh, to more than 2 million euros for uh, a, a, a bigger, uh, a, a larger one. Uh, and uh, the cost depends also uh, of the hydraulic uh, and the environmental constraints. Today, this type of operation is extremely complex. In addition to the intrinsic complexity uh, of the technical problem, the environmental constraints and the resulting administrative authorizations force uh, the maintenance manager to intervene as fast as possible, not leaving any room to improvisation. But the risk is important when the work is in progress. We are looking for fast, click, e quick, economic, clean solution, and which guarantee robustness and long-term durability. The three options considered to date are composite liners, reinforced concrete form, and pour and dry uh, short crates. A common point between these three techniques, the existing culvert is assumed to be non -part participating structurally. In other words, it's a replacement. The main solution, the main uh, solution, the main method, uh, implemented in uh, this uh, network uh, is the PVC or the glass reinforced plastic casing. The objective is to insert pre prefabricated uh, composite pipe inside the existing culvert section, provided that the misalignment of the existing culvert is not too pronounced uh, to be possible. The annular void is then filled with the cement grout. This process is Quite, is quick to implement, clean, and allows to limit the time of intervention, in particular on hydraulic culverts. Its main drawback is the significant reduction of the hydraulic section, compensated by an improvement of the manning strickler coefficient of the surface, leading to an increase of the flow speed inside the culvert. Besides, the, level, the, the water level is also increased. It should be noted that it's no longer really relevant 
to uh, significantly reduce hydraulic section due to climate change. This is therefore necessary to provide special arrangement at upstream, for example, to cut with the ups and downs caused by the water and the shallows to dissipate, uh, to dissipate energy. Another disadvantage, this process is restricted to the smallest diameter. We can, uh, we can expect a uh, diameter uh, about uh, 3.5 meters for this technique. The second methodology used in this repair uh, of metal curve is reinforced concrete. This technique is more than mastered and simple to justify by calculation. Uh, it, it can uh, repair culvert of any diameters. The typical wall thickness is uh, uh, 200 millimeters, and therefore it reduces the hydraulic section, but requi re requires less development and the downstream and upstream areas. However, the one seat work are substantial. Reinforcement, form work, and concreting works lead to a long planning, often incompatible with the allocated period of intervention. To reduce the duration of work, it's possible to provide more from work to improve the construction cycle, but these pieces of equipment are very expensive and difficult to amortize on relatively short culvert lengths. Uh, in average, our uh, culverts are a few tens of meters of length. At last, the management of the risk associated to flooding event is very random. The third repair method, classic uh, repair method, is the implementation of dry short crate. This technique offers the advantage that it does not require uh, the use of frameworks and can um, accommodate uh, the local deformation at the culvert, uh, in particular inverted profile, for example. However, it requires the installation, the installation of reinforcement uh, before end and generate a large volume of waste due to rebound of aggregate against the steel sheet, up than 50% of loss. That material must be disposed uh, in landfills, uh, which is also uh, a cost, and the work have a significant environment, uh, environmental impact. And you can imagine this kind of work in, a, in an hydraulic section. So a new solution appeared uh, really recently, uh, less than uh, one year. Uh, this is uh, the uh, UHPC, uh, the, the, the sprayed UHPC. Uh, this new solution had been developed uh, very recently in France uh, and uh, developed uh, by two, two companies, two French companies, uh, Lafarge and uh, Fresilet, which is one of the uh, uh, Vinci companies. This is extending the family of cast of UHPC. Uh, exceptional strength and durability Innovation, innovation lies in the high tixotropy of the material. Do not debond or sag when applied to the ceiling of the vertical surface. And the pupping and spraying technique. The main advantage is it's the speed of implementation without reinforcement work. The pre preservation of the existing clearance of improvement, the manning strickler coefficient by the filling corrugation. No more modification of water level, less environmental impact, and little loss, uh, about 10% rebounds versus more than 50% in the con conventional uh, dry charge kit. But there is some application condition. Uh, this is limited for uh, a two meter, uh, minimum two meter uh, opening. It needs a very good quality of backfield and I explain uh, why uh, after. And it's not possible to apply when we have inversion of curvature. So it implies uh, uh, preparation work if uh, your culvert have some uh, inversion curvature. So <clears throat> I, I may, uh, this, this presentation is not uh, regarding UHPC, but uh, uh, 
the, the idea of uh, this innovation was to fit with off, off all the, the UHPC uh, structural characteristics. So I, I, I put, I don't know if this presentation will be available uh, on the whole structure, but you can have the, the main, uh, the remaining of the, the, the main uh, property of um, UHPC. Uh, so, what is the, 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 the concept of this innovation? The main innovation is based on the tixotropic behavior of the spread UHPC, but also in the implementation process, mixes, pumping, and spraying. On the one hand, the rheology has been engineered so that the layer of UHPC does not sag when spread on the wall. No stiffening admixture are needed, which makes the solution robust. On the other hand, a specific equipment has been developed to mix, pump, and spray this highly tixotopic material, which mechanical properties are enhanced by the spraying process, in particular the compression strength. There is low hair content. The concept is to reinforce works mechanically as a composite using the interaction be between the soil and the UHPC structure. This is not as the, the, the traditional technique, a replacement. We, we take advantage of the, the, the soil structure um, uh, solution. If the soil is not too poor stiffness, the composite will be not work efficiently. It is therefore essential to know the nature and the strength of the embankment. We need more that for the other solution. It's also necessary for the other, but less. Another advantage uh, is the optimized steel fibers alignment uh, in the wet process. Uh, in place of the sensitive stresses. When we compare this process with the other one, we, we, we can see that it's particularly advantageous. Uh, the hydraulic section is practically not reduced. The water line remains unchanged. The execution time is optimized and the durability historically, because we have to, to improve, very good. It will nevertheless necessary to demonstrate. So the development of this uh, prey uh, followed the, 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 the following path. The first path, it was necessary to work on the formulation of the material, rheology, adhesion, mechanical performances, as well as the development of the specific method of equipment for mixing, pumping, or spraying the material, while controlling, and the, the, maybe the, the one of the most uh, important uh, issue was the control of the fibers orientation and the percentage of loss was maybe the main, uh, the main challenge. The second path was a um, laboratory test uh, to perform, to perform to characterize the material according to the French standard for cast UHPC, compression, density strength. And uh, I, I guess that uh, in the, the audience, there is people from the, the Université Gustave Eiffel. Uh, it was uh, IFTAR. Uh, this uh, French National Laboratory uh, accompanied this process uh, of, uh, of design. The purpose was to confirm that the material can be classified as a UHPC for structural application. The third part was the numerical models, and it was developed three uh, numerical models in order to perform with calculation according to your codes. Uh, the, the first model was a simplified approach to pre-design. The second was it was a linear approach. And the third one was a nonlinear approaches uh, with the soiling spring, uh, with the soil springs, and the explicit uh, soil modeling. 
the following pass of the modeling have to be validated by the full scale test. A new steel pipe reinforced with spray UHPC had been loaded to failure. At least the technology was implemented on an experimental structure, uh, a dry culvert of uh, about 20 meters uh, length uh, was, uh, was, was, uh, was applied. The solution of the calculation method uh, were approved by Ductal and Fresinet uh, as uh, the, the, the main uh, uh, owner of this, uh, this uh, innovation but also by the French National Technic Services and finally by the technical services of Motorways Concessionary. Uh, we have to also uh, improve uh, this calcul uh, and we also uh, uh, submit to uh, the grantor authority. It took more, more or less 24 months to complete all these steps. So by now, <clears throat> I give you uh, the, 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 re, the case study, uh, the reinforcement of uh, uh, a, a bridge in uh, the, the, the Coffee Route Network in Paris. And uh, well, I have to say that innovation is in the DNA of Vinci Autoroute. So when Fresinet, um, or partnership, proposed to experiment this promising new technique, uh, I naturally say to this opportunity. We choose a structure near Paris uh, on the A10 motorway, which is one of the main French motorway, with nearly than uh, 80,000 vehicle day. It was selected for uh, this first implementation because the culvert is a dry structure. Uh, which will allow an easy monitoring of the reinforced structure behavior at the young age. Uh, and it was really important to be able to, to, to be uh, sure of uh, this uh, monitoring. The culvert is uh, about uh, 40 meters uh, length with a circular shape diameters of 2.7 meters, built in the 1971. The UHPC reinforced has a mean thickness of 75 millimeters. The spray UHPC is also coated with a thin mortar, two centimeters, to embed the protruding steel fibers that may hurt the user. The main geometric and functional features are recalled on the side. You can see. <clears throat> So uh, the main steps of this process were first the site investigation and studies when we, we said uh, the soil investigation are really uh, important for this, uh, this concept uh, and uh, all the, the, the calculation uh, are also really important. And you can, uh, we, we can uh, verify of all the, uh, the calculation hypothesis regarding the sole uh, investigation results. The second step was the works with the casting of the raft in reinforced concrete with a flat surface for the traffic, cleaning and preparation of the surface by a, a light abrasive blasting, construction of the UHPC shell with the production of uh, six ring uh, a day, and uh, all this work were, uh, 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 were controlled by uh, uh, my services and also uh, the, the, we, we, we give a mission to uh, a French uh, national uh, agency uh, to help us in order to, to lead this process. And we also, uh, uh, we also uh, decide to monitorize during 10 years the deformation of uh, the, this, uh, this, um, this bridge. There is a lot of control, uh, compression test and the blending test, and our main issue as an owner is the sustainability and operability. 
so maybe uh, we can put also in perspective uh, the main, uh, the, the other potential application uh, that we, we can imagine with this process. Uh, and we can imagine that it could be used as a, a strength, strengthening of concrete structures, a rehabilitation of maritime structures because of the, uh, the, the, the good, um, the, the, the good uh, resistance uh, to corrosion rehabilitation of hydraulic structures and the tunnel uh, lining also. Regarding the process, uh, it was, uh, uh, it's really possible to, to, to have a process more industrialized that we, we, we applied in uh, our, uh, our rock, in our bridge. And uh, I know that the, uh, the team, uh, Fresinet uh, Ductal, um, is implementing um, a very good uh, automatic automatization implementation with the 80% automated operation, a mixing station, pumping station uh, on the water treatment uh, would be completely uh, automatic. The challenge <clears throat> is uh, steady production and pumping in order to have a continuous spraying. So uh, to conclude my, uh, my presentation, I can uh, say that for us uh, and uh, maybe uh, in 30 years, uh, we have the, the problem of this uh, metal culvert uh, uh, bridges due to corrosion. Uh, we implement a lot of solu solution, but maybe regarding the, 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 the really uh, strong constraints regarding uh, environmental issues, uh, the shield spread UHPC could be a really good solution for us. And we also can imagine maybe uh, the extrapolation of this, uh, this, this solution for other reparation, uh, other repair, other maintaining um, uh, so I, I, I finish my, my, uh, my presentation. I'm sorry for my English, uh, which is not uh, as good as, uh, as, uh, as, I, uh, as I would like. But I think that I, I guess that it will, it, it will be enough to be understood. And uh, I, uh, I am uh, available to answer your questions. Thank you, Nicolas. So it was very, very interesting question and uh, dealing with a very relevant point and, and fact that I imagine it's not only on Vancey, I imagine that many other concessionaires and the road operators are facing this, uh, this issue nowadays. I would like also to remember people that uh, are attending this um, talk to turn off uh, your, your camera and also uh, that uh, those questions, those who want to, to place questions, they can do it either on, on a Facebook or either here in the Zoom. But uh, in the Zoom, I'm going to ask you to do and to place those questions on the chat. So uh, feel free to put questions to Nicholas, but uh, should be on, on, on the chat and we will coordinate in, in this way. So. Nikos, uh, I think I have uh, the right, or I'm gonna make you the, my my first question. Uh, and my first question is uh, concerning also uh, the the yearly maintenance costs that you have at Vancy, and uh, comparing the costs that you have. Uh, with uh, with the culverts compared with other structural types uh, what is more or less the relevance in terms of yearly maintenance costs and also the other thing that i want to ask you is if you are using any kind of uh, criticality indicator or whatever in order to uh, identify from those culverts that exist now what are those that are in a more uh, risky uh, way so you need to act now or those that you need to act 
uh, in a in a in a later time in in, in a later period. Yes. Uh, yes, we <clears throat> we have an, uh, according the the French standard and according the uh, the way we have to deal with uh, uh, our bridge management. Uh, we follow uh, all our bridges. Uh, we have uh, a really strong uh, inspection campaigns. Uh, we have, uh, for example, an uh, uh, each year uh, summary uh, inspection of our bridges, and we have uh, complete inspections every five years uh, by engineers. And uh, for uh, the, the most critical uh, conception, we have more than visual inspections. We also size some, um, for, exam for example, we size uh, uh, the thickness of, uh, of uh, steel. In these structures, each year, we uh, size the thickness of the, the steels. And we can uh, mixing the, the observation of the corrosion that we are able to do uh, with the vision, uh, with the visual inspection, uh, mixed with the result of uh, the corrosion uh, sizing that we, we, we do each year, we are able to have this kind uh, of, uh, uh, of analysis that you, you can see in the, the slide which is uh, the, uh, a kind of uh, a hierarchy uh, regarding uh, the, the, the importance and the priority of our action. And according all this, uh, this, 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 this analysis, we are able to, to have a, a program of uh, maintenance for this pathology. And uh, 30 years ago, uh, we, when we, we do the first uh, check, we identify the most critical uh, bridges and we, uh, we, we, we repair, uh, of course, the most critical. And today, uh, each year, we substitute uh, and we replace uh, some bridges uh, according the list of priority we did uh, 30 years ago, and we update each year. I don't know if I, I answer your question, but yes. It's, it's but in terms of uh, of uh, impact in in uh, <clears throat> yearly costs, do you have an idea how how, how much this represents to Vancy in terms of uh, of maintenance costs, the culverts compared with uh, the other? Uh, the types of, of bridges and viaducts? Bon, uh, I'm not able uh, to, to give you uh, okay. some, 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 uh, uh, some, bon, I, I, I'm, uh, it, it's a confidential uh, data. But what I can say that uh, we have uh, on uh, Vinci Network uh, more than uh, between 10 and 20 uh, bridges of this kind uh, replace each year. And you know that uh, I, I, I said in my presentation that the cost is between uh, 200,000 euros. Uh, 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 it's from uh, 200,000 euros uh, to more than 2 million euros uh, according to the size of the, the bridge. Uh, so you can imagine uh, the amount it's a really important amount. Uh, and you, you have to know that uh, also, uh, I think that I, I said in my presentation, that it's one of uh, the sudden collapse possible uh, of uh, motorway. Uh, fortunately, uh, in uh, Vinci Autoroute, uh, we didn't uh, have this kind of problem. We are, uh, my job is, <laughs> is to, uh, to, to, to turn impossible this kind of collapse. But uh, in France, we already had this kind of collapse. OK, thank you very much. Uh, before I ask Joan to make the second question, I would like to ask all to place the questions to the Eurostruct Association uh, account, OK? 
So in the chat, please choose Eurostruct Association and place the question directly to, to there. Okay, thank you very much. Joan, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, Nicolas, thank you for your presentation. I appreciate very much that you focus on a structure that is not the longest palm bridge and the very nice structure, but something that is important. And without this type of structures, these uh, small and insignificant structures, also the highways will, will not work. I had some questions to do uh, to you, but I prefer to pass first the questions from the audience. And if there is time at the end, I will make you the, my questions. So we have some questions already in the, in the, in the chat. The first one is, uh, there are two people that are almost asking the same question. It's uh, Jose Carlos Patino and Amir Kedar. And they ask about the type of preparation to be done in the surface of the, of the steel before the spraying of the concrete. The preparation uh, is, uh, is uh, relatively simple. Uh, we, we have to, uh, let me give you the, I give you the, the, the presentation. Ah. It's basically uh, simple. Uh, the preparation of the steel is only uh, a light abrasive blasting uh, to uh, to help uh, the the adhesion of uh, the, 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 the 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 concrete uh, the UHPC on the, the steel. In some situation, uh, we also have to put uh, some uh, steel networks uh, to help at the most um, uh, at the most vertical uh, places and in uh, the picture for example you have uh, for the, the, the experience uh, uh, we did in a coffee root network uh, in some places they, they put uh, some um, uh, some uh, some some uh, steel uh, networks it was not for uh, structural uh, behavior. It was only to help the adhesion of the, the concrete on the culvert. Uh, I, I guess that uh, by now, uh, they, they work on the um, uh, concrete formulation in order to not uh, be necessary to put uh, this kind of uh, red of network, sorry. <clears throat> okay, okay. There, there is another interesting question from Amir uh, Kedar regarding the, the quality control of the system, because uh, we assume that it's very important to have the, the right thickness in all the parts of the, of the reparation. So the question is, if you do this by man-made, man -made, probably the thickness is not very well controlled. What about using a, a shortcut machine with a laser guiding and so on to make me more automatic and more easy to control the thickness of the of the concrete uh, <clears throat> the the process we had uh, we implemented uh, uh, in this um, uh, in this work uh, was uh, um, a radar inspection in order to size uh, the, the the concrete uh, the the thickness um, and as uh, a first experience, uh, we have uh, almost a continued control. Uh, uh, we, we reinforce a lot uh, in order to be sure that uh, there is no problem of, um, of uh, thickness. But I, I think that this idea can be a good idea also. I, uh, I can uh, not. Uh, but uh, what we did in this uh, work was more uh, uh, radar and uh, uh, a, 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 a continued control uh, by uh, our team. But of course, it was an experimentation uh, as a run a solution. It would be uh, necessary to improve uh, more um, uh, realistic uh, control implementation system. 
Yeah, also regarding these uh, first experiences, there is a question from Francois Toulemon. It's asking, what are the lessons learned from the first implementation? Warnings, aspects requiring care, for instance, supply chain of the ultra high performance concrete, sensitivity to the temperature and climatic constraints for implementation. And also uh, the last question is if you have the road in use during the reparation. Uh, Many so, questions in one. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, basically, the question is, uh, what is the our feedback? Uh, yes. well, uh, we, we do this, this uh, work uh, more or less one year ago. Uh, so uh, we, have, uh, we have not a, a long feedback. Uh, but during the works, we already uh, understood some, uh, some good uh, information. Uh, we we have some uh, problem of pumping, for example, from uh, who uh, which uh, define the new solution that uh, Fresinet and uh, Ductal uh, uh, will improve for the next works. But regarding, for example, the the climatic condition, uh, we choose the the. Uh, the, the, the best uh, time to do this work. Uh, we choose uh, the beginning of the spring. So the beginning of the spring is good because it's not uh, uh, it's not warm, warm uh, it's not too warm, it's not uh, too cold. It's more or less the 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 really good time to do this work. Uh, so we didn't. Uh, have information. I have not. Maybe uh, maybe Fresinant Ductal have. Uh, I have not information regarding the impact of the really warm uh, weather or a really cold weather on the uh, this process. Uh, what we see after one uh, one year, we we have not. Uh, uh, the 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 result is uh, as expected. Uh, we have not. Um, seen uh, any uh, uh, the, the, the inspection uh, didn't uh, saw something uh, wrong regarding what we respect. Nicolas, uh, we have here a question also uh, from the audience uh, concerning what size of uh, fiber are you using in this application? Do you have an idea? What size of? Is of the fiber that you are using. I, mm -hmm. I have not this information. Uh, it was um, uh, it, it was a really uh, specific. Uh, uh, I have not the information. I'm sorry. Uh, it was a specific fiber. Uh, um, no, I'm uh, I'm sorry. I have not. Uh, and I, there I, is an, another one concerning. Also, we were speaking about the preparation. Concerning uh, how the corrugated sheet should be prepared before applying it, uh... <clears throat> uh, it was uh, uh, what I uh, I said. Uh, it's uh, only a light abrasive blasting uh, in order to 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 give more uh, adhesion uh, at the, for the, the 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 concrete and the the, the steel. Uh, but uh, nothing more. Uh, see, see, maybe, maybe I can, uh, I can uh, give. A... There is one thing very important. This is the geometric uh, constraints. It's not possible to apply this uh, method if you have, um, uh, if you have, if you have not a regular curvature of the culvert. Um, if you have uh, some, uh, uh, I, maybe my English is not right. I, I, I give you, I have on my note, uh, maybe uh, the right word. Yes. <clears throat> It's not possible to apply this solution if you have an inversion curvature uh, at the top of the culvert. 
because this is a sole structure uh, uh, physical, uh, uh, mechanical uh, behavior. So if you have uh, um, uh, an inversion curvature, uh, there is some uh, mechanical, mechanical uh, uh, dysfunctionment, and the, there is no, no possible. So if you have a punctual um, inversion of curvature, it's possible to, to do uh, preparation works in order to correct this inversion. Nevertheless, if you have a general inversion curvature, maybe the best solution is to implement another uh, repairing method. The, I think that uh, this, this method is good uh, when you have all little uh, inversion curvature or not uh, inversion curvature. Thank you, Nikos. There is only one last one question that I want to, play, to put, and then I will ask Joanne to continue. Uh, the, the, last, the, the last question that is about the velocity uh, of uh, the concrete shooting. If you have uh, any idea of, uh, of, of that, what is the velocity value, and if it is also stable during the operation? Um. The, the velocity, I think that you, you mean the, what is uh, the, the velocity? The, yes, 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 uh, okay. of the shooting. Um, what, what we see, it, uh, uh, we, we uh, how can I uh, translate this in, uh, in quantity? Uh, we, we, we were able to do more or less. Uh, 12 meters of uh, culvert a day. Uh, it was uh, more or less uh, four, met four meter diameter. Uh, so uh, the, the main problem we had in this, uh, uh, in this process uh, with the, the tool uh, we had, it was that the preparation mix of the shot crit was uh, quite long, and uh, we were able to put to apply uh, three or uh, four um, um, preparation a day. Uh, so the problem was not so the application time, but the mix time. I know that today, after this experience, Fresinet uh, and Ductal worked on uh, 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 an industrial uh, process in order to turn uh, uh, quicker all this mixing process. And I believe that uh, if, uh, without this uh, limitation, uh, it would be possible uh, to to do uh, maybe uh, I, 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 I don't want to say uh, uh, something wrong, but uh, more than 20 meters of culvert a day. Um, it's uh, I, I, I try to, to to translate in a quantity, but uh, it's uh, maybe some. Uh, no, uh, well, I, I don't want to say uh, something wrong, so uh, I, I will give you the information uh, you can put on the site after. But uh, it's it's uh, it's really it's more or less uh, three times quicker than the the, the short crit uh, traditional solution. Okay, thank you, Nicholas. Join. <clears throat> yes. Nicolas, as you could expect, there are some questions related to the sustainability of the technique, no? Uh, summarizing uh, all of them, the questions is about uh, uh, if you are using other green and sustainable materials uh, with the concrete or instead of the concrete. And the other one is uh, what can be done to minimize the embodied carbon emissions on the ultra-high performance concrete? 
so this solution uh, is a, is a way uh, to 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 use less uh, to, to reduce the footprint the, the the carbon footprint because the quantity of uh, of concrete uh, the quantity of cement is really less than uh, in a, a traditional solutions uh, so uh, this is a kind of uh, solution uh, really virtuous uh, respecting uh, <coughs> respecting uh, carbon footprint we also in uh, Vinci Autoroute, we also have some uh, experience uh, but it's not nothing to see with this uh, this example uh, <coughs> in, in more in the new uh, bridges we are uh, doing some experimentation with the low carbon concrete. Um, bon, uh, it's, uh, it's quite new. Uh, we have some uh, experimentation uh, in progress. Uh, and the idea is to use uh, cement uh, done with, uh, uh, with, uh, without uh, uh, clinker. So uh, without uh, uh, oven, uh, traditional uh, concrete oven. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a re, it's a reduction of um, uh, of uh, energy uh, needs of the pro progress uh, of the process. I'm sorry, uh, but it, it's something we we want to uh, to go on. Uh, and we have some uh, uh, some experimentation in progress. I, I, I think, I consider that the short crit uh, UHPC is completely uh, in this uh, in this kind of uh, strategy. Okay, thank you, Nicolas. Another question is related to that uh, other subject is uh, uh, we have been talking about the steel, we have talked about the concrete, but there is another important uh, ingredient here that is the soil, no? So before the repair, how do you know of the properties of the soil and how is this taken into account in the repair project? Uh, it's also, uh, the, the, it's maybe uh, one of the most important condition uh, when I, uh, I, I, I say that this is a, um, uh, uh, a soil, uh, 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 it's a, a soil structure. So uh, uh, the property of uh, the soil is really, really important. So we we do uh, some investigations. Uh, the investigation uh, are uh, basically did with the. Um, um, uh, um, I. Uh, carot uh, I, uh, we do some investigation on the abutment uh, of the 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 the, 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 the embankment, and we analyze all the uh, the soil property uh, regarding uh, the the strength, and it's necessary. I have some value. It's necessary to be uh, better than 40, 40 MPA. This is, yes, the soil modulus uh, is necessary to be uh, upper than for, uh, 40 MPA. So we have to 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 check this uh, characteristic. Okay, Nicholas. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> Joan, please go ahead. Sorry. Please go ahead. <laughs> yes, the last question here in my in the in the chat is more uh, regarding some chemical chemical reactions. The question is: uh, May the bond to galvanize still be damaged by the development of hydrogen due to the reaction with the zinc uh, with the cement? Well, as a, a bridge uh, manager, as an owner, I'm not a chemical, yeah. so, 
I'm, I'm really sorry I'm not able to answer this uh, this question, uh, but I, I believe that if you you give me this question, uh, I can uh, I can check uh, the the answer with the uh, with the people from uh, Fresina and Ducktown. Okay. Okay, Nicolas. Nicolas, uh, we were speaking about quality control and using GPR. Uh, there is a question about. Uh, um, if you check the homogeneity of concrete and also the voids ratio in the concrete because radar is able to detect the voids in the concrete if this was something that was checked with the GPR during the process of quality control uh, yes we, we, we check uh, as we, we did in this experimentation, we check in two, uh, in, in two steps. First, uh, at the mixed, in the mixed uh, process, during the mix, and before to be pumping, uh, there is uh, 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 some control of uh, homogeneity, homogeneity of the, the, the concrete, but uh, really important homogeneity of the fibers uh, inside the concrete. After uh, the process, uh, the, 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 the pumping, one of the uh, innovation challenge was to find the, all the pumping process in order to keep this homogeneity uh, on the material in place. So uh, there is uh, a, re a really uh, all the, 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 what is really clever in this solution is uh, the shape of uh, the, 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 the pumping uh, tool uh, who give uh, the guarantee to keep this homogeneity and to keep also a right uh, quantity of fiber in the, the, in the right orientation regarding the, what we expect uh, um, uh, for the, uh, a, a good uh, mechanical function of uh, the, the, the structure. So, so we have two, two uh, control uh, quality. The control quality is on the bald uh, during the mixing in order to to check the right quantity of uh, fiber by uh, per unity of uh, concrete. And after, uh, it check by uh, some, um, uh, some uh, carrot uh, in order to uh, analyze the, the homogeneity of samples, on samples. So you control the, the orientation of the fibers in the concrete, right? Through the GPR. Yes. yes. Another question, uh, Nico, uh, is, uh, uh, is, is, is the process that you spoke about, uh, is, is it a wet mixed or dry mixed sprayed concrete? Uh, and, and what components uh, are mixed before uh, spraying? Uh, you spoke about uh, that previously. And there is a question about if it is a wet or dry mix and what components. Uh, uh, you speak of regarding the, the traditional technique. Yeah, the spraying, the spraying process of the concrete. The, the dry spraying process of yeah. the concrete. Yeah, it's a dry spraying, yeah. And what components? Uh, it's uh, in this uh, situation, this is a... Uh, a uh, re relatively traditional uh, composition of concrete uh, with uh, a limited um, uh, a limited uh, uh, granulate uh, size, uh, but uh, you have not in this situation. Uh, it's only um, uh, concrete uh, without um, fibers. Because in this situation, you have to put your steel uh, before uh, to, to spray the concrete. So uh, mm -hmm. you, it's, it, you have 
Bon, I, I, I don't know exactly what are you, the adjuvant, the special adjuvant that you have uh, to, to, to give the, the good rheology. I, 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 don't, I don't really know. But uh, it's, there, there is no um, uh, fiber adjuvant, in this, uh, fiber um, addition in this situation. Okay, Joël. Yes, well, I don't have more questions in the chat, so I would like to put my question. Is that after this experience, after all these uh, years of using uh, this, uh, this uh, system and all the problems that they appear related to the corrosion, the damage, and all the cause of to repair these uh, damaged uh, culverts, do you think that for new culverts, this is a still a good uh, solution or it will be better the traditional way of concrete either in situ or precast concrete. What do you think about? Uh, well, in France, we didn't uh, do more uh, steel structure, uh, maybe 20 years ago. <laughs> so uh, yes, it, this is not a, a really uh, uh, a good solution for, uh, uh, I, I, it can do a lot of uh, problem, but we still have, a little quantity, but we have some uh, culverts uh, with uh, 40 years in really good uh, conservation state. But it was uh, a situation uh, without uh, a high, uh, um, high salt uh, sensibility. It was a site, uh, it was embankment uh, without uh, acidity. Uh, it was a, a lot of situation, uh, but it was a, a kind of um, a good surprise because all this situation, all this factor was not thought uh, when the, these uh, bridges were uh, implemented, were built. To be sincere, Today, I'm not really a uh, fan of this kind of conception because uh, it's assumed at the beginning that is a, a conception uh, who will, uh, where the corrosion would be really active uh, since the beginning. And if you put this kind of structure uh, when you have uh, a, a tidal uh, a, a tidal problem. Uh, it could be. It, it's it's of course it's obvious that you would have some corrosion problem. Yeah. Maybe maybe if you choose uh, a, a, an application, for example, for a temporary bridge, if you have, for example, uh, 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 to to implement. Um, Side work, it could be a cheap solution, yeah. but I, I don't uh, uh, advise this solution for a uh, long, uh, long price and for, uh, for 100 years uh, <laughs> sustainability. So, in summary, something that you have to take care of of the existing ones, but you will not promote the use of new ones in the new constructions. Oh, that's right. Because probably if you, if you perform a, a life cycle analysis of these structures, of course, they are probably cheaper at the beginning because it's very fast and very quick to, to build them. But then in the long time, uh, the behavior is not, uh, the performance is not good enough. Yes, yes, uh, it's totally right. Uh, Nicholas, I have here uh, two more questions and then I will ask Joan to put the, the final question uh, because we are already achieving the, the time. So the, the two questions that I have from uh, the audience is um, the first one is if you are compared the uh, embodied carbon for a traditional sprayed concrete repair with a UHPC repair, if what this comparison was made. This comparison was made, but uh... Uh, not uh, um, it, it was meant as uh, as a ratio approach, but not uh, really uh, with uh, 
uh, a, a, a really uh, uh, a deep uh, study. And uh, we, 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 we checked that it was uh, uh, more, um, uh, more interesting regarding the carbon footprint, but uh, we have not uh, really a rigorous value. I think that it's maybe the next step is to give the demonstration uh, that uh, uh, and uh, to be able to quantify this uh, this uh, this value and this uh, this gain. Okay, and the other question is: uh, Have you tried of using UHPC as a matrix for textile reinforced mortar to strengthen structural concrete elements? And how is its bonding performance with concrete substrate? I don't really understand. If if you tried using UHPC yes. as a matrix for textile reinforced mortar, for text textile reinforced mortar, in order to strengthen uh, structural concrete elements, if this was already used by Invency, this uh, technique for uh, for re, uh, re in, in a in a strengthening of structural elements, structural concrete elements. Ah. If uh, if you ever try to use UHPC as a matrix for uh, uh, reinforcing mortar, by now uh, we 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 have not used. We have uh, some projects uh, uh, to use UHPC. Uh, well, I, uh, some of them are under uh, under. Um, I am not uh, allowed to to speak about. But other one are uh, use UHPC not uh, spread, uh, but but uh, as it was already al already done, it's not an innovation um, for uh, re reinforce the deck uh, and to give the waterproofing uh, characteristic. Uh, we 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 had some bridges in under study uh, for this 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 kind of use. We are also um, thinking uh, using the, the, this kind of solution to reinforce uh, the, uh, some uh, walls, uh, but uh, it's, it's not, uh, we have not uh, achieved the, the demonstration that it's, uh, it's interesting. Okay. Juan, last question. So, last question, okay. So it will be more, it will not be too related to the presentation from, from today. It will be a more general question regarding the force on the assessment and quality control of structures. And it's a question that I want to point to you because you were a very active member of uh, Cost Action, uh, working on the, on the Industrial Advisory Board with the owner's perspective that is very important for us. And as you know, these, uh, has developed to this new uh, association, this Eurostruck association that wants to develop this and, and, and take, the, take the momentum that we got from the, from the action. So I would like to know from the point of view of the uh, asset manager and the owner, what is your opinion about this initiative, initiative of the Eurostruck, continuing the work developing the cost action? Uh, I, uh, of course, uh, as a bridge manager uh, and in uh, the, the really uh, rich and uh, sad actuality that we, we had uh, the past years, uh, I think that all initiatives regarding uh, the improvement of uh, quality control and uh, uh, say uh, in order to to, to have a better management of bridges in Europe uh, looks uh, really uh, profitable. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, and uh, you know, uh, you said in the introduction, I'm also uh, an active member in CARC and uh, uh, all our works uh, are also as uh, in, uh, in uh, Eurostruct, uh, in the same direction is to improve the safety uh, for the user of bridges in uh, a context 
uh, that we that all European countries uh, know today. Uh, we have uh, more traffic. Well, it was not right during the three last months, but uh, <laughs> we have, uh, in average, we have more traffic. Uh, we are more loading. We are more need of uh, loading. We have bridges uh, hold and holder, and uh, we need to to know. Uh, and we also have a really hard constraint, economic constraints, economic uh, cons uh, budget constraints uh, regarding the the bridges maintenance. All initiatives uh, able to help uh, owners to help uh, governments to optimize this terrific equation are welcomed. So uh, I think that uh, all you worked, uh, all your contribution, as the same as the PIARC and YAPSE and the YAMAS and all this community is really uh, useful today. And I think that it was maybe, uh, it will be more uh, important tomorrow than it was uh, 10 years ago. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Nicholas. So, uh, again, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, for being with us today. It was a very, very interesting uh, uh, presentation with the uh, technology to solve one of the biggest issues that uh, concessionaires and operators have nowadays. Uh, and uh, still there are uh, some points that need to be uh, improved for uh, for the future and uh, here we are as zero struct to 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 discuss and uh, try to to find out solutions and the uh, networking for for uh, ameliorating the quality of uh, the structures at the european level uh, such as uh, you you mentioned I would like to acknowledge you and Vinci. I'd like to acknowledge Joanne for being with me uh, today on the on the moderation. Uh, I will only like to give you some uh, uh, information about uh, the events uh, of our associate partners. So uh, concerning IAPSE, we we're going to have the IAPSE 2020 symposium on Wroclaw. It was supposed this symposium to take place on the 20 to 22 of May, but now is rescheduled to take place from the 7 to 9 of October 2020. And the IRC task group meetings and welcome reception for participants will be held on the 6th of October 2020. So the early bird registration was extended until 15 of June 2020. The other uh, information is about the IRC 2021 in New Delhi. Uh, if you did not submit your abstract. So the good news is that the deadline was extended until 31 of May of 2020. So it is, was uh, last week, but you are still on time to, to, to submit uh, your abstract. And uh, uh, please submit your abstract and visit uh, and use opportunity to visit India. Also from uh, FIB, uh, as you are aware, the FIB in Shanghai was rescheduled to 20 to 24 of November 2020. So the abstract submission is still open and also the early bird registration was postponed. So for those willing to go to Shanghai, um, is information that was rescheduled the FIB to end of November. With respect to Eurostruct, I would like to inform about the training course in uh, initially was supposed to be in Ireland, but now we took a decision uh, to make it completely online. And this will be held from the 2nd to the 4th of September 2020. So for those which are willing to, to learn and uh, have more knowledge about uh, the quality control procedures which were discussed during the cost action 1406, you're going to have opportunity to uh, attend this online course and also to uh, discuss with other colleagues from all over Europe and not only 
uh, and uh, about these issues that are, uh, we are facing in now, nowadays concerning the, the maintenance and the quality control of our structures. Also, the Eurostruct 2021 conference in Padua, I would like to inform you that the launch for abstracts will be, is, will be released uh, this month. So it will be held from 29 to 31 of August next year. So those who are willing to submit an abstract, you are very welcome. It will be in Italy, in Padua, a very nice place also to go. And finally, uh, I would like to use this uh, last opportunity to invite you for our next talk that will be held with uh, Helmut Wenzel on risk-based monitoring of uh, existing structures. And it will be held on the 9th of June at 2 p.m. Central European Summer Time. So, Thank you very much to be with us during this session and I wish you a very good day and a very good week. See you on the 9th of June and uh, thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye Jose. Bye bye Nicolas. Bye Joan, bye Nicolas. Bye everybody.